Welcome back to PJ Chen Design. This is PJ. If you are looking into a streamlined or organic shape with the Rhino 3D software, you don't want to miss the Rhino 3D sub -D. In this tutorial, I would like to show you what is the easiest way to create hummingbird form in the Rhino 3D sub -D. Are you ready? Let's get started. For this hummingbird, we are going to use the most simple way to build in the sub D coming out from the sub D sphere and connecting them all together. Let's starting from the scratch. So we're gonna starting at the front view for whatever design that you want. Since I'm not gonna print it out, so it's okay for whatever design uh, the size what I want. Coming into the sub D uh, tab right here that you can see this is a sub D tool right here, or you can coming into the top. There's a sub D drop down menu, so either the menu or the icon, or you can type it. That will be fine. We're gonna pick up the sub D sphere. And under here, the style, I would like to use the quad and the subdivision, which is equal one. So let's go ahead to snapping into the zero, type it zero here. And we are going to create roughly about this size for the head, probably like this. Okay, so this is where the head is. You can move it to maybe the place that you want. So first of all, we need to have the beak. So I'm going to use the faces and pick up those faces. And let me show you all four view look like. These faces will be pick it up. And in fact, let's look at the perspective view. And I'm going to use the extrude on the gumball to bring out once and twice and three times. Right, so now we have those extension uh, form that we can use. And then, so when we have this like that, we can go ahead to pick up all the faces and we can 3D scale it down, something like this. And with this one, or you can pick up the curve that will work too, and then you want to 3D scale it down. Notice I'm using the gumball, so I'm actually holding the shift command when I'm trying to scale so I can have 3D scale. So now I basically got this form right here. In the sub D, you have this sub D you can transform to uh, toggle sub D display. Uh, you can click on this one and you will see more like a box view right here. I usually like to have my box view and also align all of those points. So I'm going to pick up the sub D vertex and I'm going to pick up all of this right here. And simply, I'm just going to type on my gumball 1D scale and type it zero here. So all of this will be aligned. And then we're gonna do all the things for all of them, right? So we're gonna type it uh, equal one. And then we'll get something like this. Now, I probably need to have this point coming out a little bit, right? Let's toggle it back to see what does that become. So it will become something more uniform like this. Right. So if that is the beak okay to you, uh, that would be fine. But I don't like this. If you see the front view, I don't like this like a tapery too much. Uh, hummingbird does have a, a little bit round fat head. So I'm going to bring this in and uh, creating something like that. So it's not tapered that much. If you feel like this is not what you're looking for, what you can do is you can also edit one more line next to it. So something like that. So now with this control right here, we can have this one get closer. So that way we can maintain the round shape a little bit better, right? So let's take a look on this and see if this is what we want. I think Hummingbird may have a little bit more pointed. Um, so I might want to do something more like this. It's more rounded, it's more pointed. And then I actually may want to pick up all these faces one more time. And we want to extrude it one more time and get it thinner. Not to the point. If we are actually casting this piece, we don't want it to get a super pointed there. All right, so double make sure with this view. Uh, this is also a good indication saying like this, all this point or all this curve right here, I actually want them to be align something like that it look more graceful like doing something like this and i can move in this point out just a little bit all right and then we tap it back to the um 
this view of a smooth mall and then see if that we like it. All right, I think this point might get super pointed there. It's going to hurt somebody if somebody wear this jewelry. All right, so I'm going to um, make sure it's not super pointed. Maybe just moving a little bit. All right, so this is the head that we have. Okay, now how do we do the body? The same thing, I'm going to use the same uh, primitive from the sub D. So we want to use the sub D sphere and we want to create another sphere right here. Okay, so I may want to have this body coming over somewhere close to here. Uh, the key is I'm having, I'm going to bridge in between. So I need to have this one align really well. Okay, uh, maybe this is way too fast and I want to move it somewhere like this. We need to have this body a little bit elongated. So I'm going to pick up all this surface and kind of drag it down like this. So the body is more elongated. So let's take a look on all view. I'm also change all of them into the ghost views easier for you to see. All right, so now we have this body. Now on the bottom of this body, I do want to have those faces. It's kind of 1D scale it down. So it's more taper right there uh, for the body. Maybe at the front, the face is like right here. I want them to go a little bit wider, something like that. Okay, and then uh, once you're done, we need to connect it both sides. And then so I'm gonna come in over here using the sub D bridge. I'm going to pick up one, two, three, four, those four facet. Okay, and then you hit enter. And then you come into the other side, you pick the same four faces here on the opposite side. So we're gonna pick up here and hit enter. Now you see the neck is connected, but the neck is pretty fast, right? So you can you can adjust it later by increasing more section if you want to. So you have a lot more to adjust. I usually have two or three, and that sh I think that should be enough. Okay, once we have that, if we want to have the neck area a little bit smaller, we can pick up this loop right here with the sub D H uh, tool. And then we can 3D scale this down a little bit. All right, so now we have, you know, the body and the, and the head. And we can continue to edit if you want to. Now let's take a look on the tail. Again, I am going to pick up these faces and these faces over here. And then I'm going to extrude it from here instead of creating another um, piece and then try to bridge it. So I'm going to extrude it one, extrude it twice, and maybe extrude it third time. All right, so now I have this uh, area, it's like going to be my tail. And again, I also want to check on the box mode. It's because I always, I like everything aligned nicely. So I'm going to come in over here and take a look on all those points. So let's go ahead and use the sub D filter for vertex. I'm going to pick up here and on my right view, and I'm going to align them. So align to the zero, again, align to the zero, again, align to the zero. It's just keeping a good habit that align all of them most of the time. And then it's easier later on when you try to align them. Right uh, now we can have like this. I may want them to get a little bit wider. Right. So this kind of coming out a little bit like this and each of them is going to be a little bit wider. Uh, if that is what you like, let's tape it back to here and see if this is um, work for you. If not, you can continue to edit. Maybe you need to have like so wide like this. Okay, now we have this into the, the correct shape. Maybe we wanted to uh, 1D scale it down, like this one, going scale it down, and it's going to a little bit more pointed. So it's wider but thinner at the end. Okay, this bird looks like a hunchback. So we wanted to pick up all this point, and I want to use the rotate tool, and want to rotate it something like this and maybe move it up a little bit. All right, so those points, I actually want to move up so it's not blocking there. Let's take a look if that look all right there. All right, that look all right to me. Maybe I want it a bit thinner. So maybe I want to pick up those and just one day scale it down, something like this. So it look like a tail there. Okay, now let's 
talk about the wing. I wanted the wing coming out from the body. So I'm going to pick up these faces and these faces. So let's take a look on this view right here. I'm going to extrude it and have them go higher in the angle and also 3D scale with the gumball to bring it down and something like this. All right, so you can see on my perspective, I have the wing coming out the body. I'm going to extrude it one more time, bring up to where it is. You can change the angle if you want to and 1D scale a little bit more, right? So now we have this. I think I need to get it a little bit longer. So extrude it one more time with the gumball and then holding my shift, 3D, 3D scale it down and then we'll get something like this. All right, so overall, I think it's a little bit too thin. So what I wanted to do is I want to pick up all these faces right here, actually on the second part right here, um, all the faces, don't forget to pick up this one and just drag them a little bit and tilt it a little bit. All right, so this will be the wing. Now the wing is more too close to the body. So I'm going to pick up all this shape right here and kind of a rotate it. So we want to rotate it something like this with the rotate command. All right, so then I have one wing there. Um, I think right here I might need some def more definition. So I might want to pick up uh, the sub the edge right here and kind of moving in. All right, so skinnier where it's connected to the wing. All right, you can have a wing tilted more if you want to. Do we want to work on the other side uh, the same way you could, or you can use the command for reflect. And I'm going to pick up this object and we want to reflect with the Y axis and click on the bottom of the Y axis and hit enter. So then we'll have the wing like this. Okay, now if you wanted to like looking at this angle, that would be fine. But a lot of time, one wing will be uh, a bit close to the head to the other. So if I'm doing any editing right here, like let's say I'm moving this, the other side will follow, right? Because there's a history in there. So uh, what we wanted to do is we want to cancel uh, the this uh, reflect uh, by right click on your mouse on the reflect, sub the reflect. And then we want to click on this. So now there's no reflect. And I actually wanted to go ahead to pick up this wing right here. Um, and then actually I want to use the point, uh, not the point, the sub the vertex. I might also want to pick up this, like all of them coming over here. Depends on where you want this to be the turning point. So I think I wanted to have here, uh, also here, also the point, this point, and this point, this point. I hope I didn't missing anyone. Uh, double make sure all the points being picked. And after we pick those points, we want to use the rotate command and you want to rotate a little bit like this. All right, so now you have one uh, like this. In the more perspective one, this might need to be shorter, just fit it for the perspective, even though the structure, they are almost the same one. All right, so then that will look right. Now, if you take a look on the front view, then you will see this, you will see both wing at, at this point. All right, so once you're done, this could be a pendant or could be the earring, or you can continue to add it to getting more detail. I hope you enjoyed this hummingbird with the Subdi tutorial and I have a lot more to show you. If you're interested in the organic shape, check out my course, the Rhino 3D Subdi for Jewelry Care Design. The link is in the description below and hope to see you in the course. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next.